the United Liberation Front of Assam is a separatist outfit operating in Assam, northeast India. It seeks to establish a sovereign Assam via an armed struggle in the Assam conflict. The government of India banned the organization in 1990 citing it as a terrorist organization, while the United States Department of State lists it under other groups of concern, according to ULFA sources. It was founded on 7 April 1979 at Ranga, a historic structure dating to the AHOM Kingdom and began operations in 1990. Sunil Nath, former Central Publicity Secretary and spokesman of ULFA has stated that the organization established highs with the Nationalist Socialist Council of Nagaland in 1983 and with the Burma-based Kia in 1987. Military operations against the ULFA by the Indian Army began in 1990 and continue into the present. On 5 December 2009, the chairman and the deputy commander-in-chief of ULFA was taken into Indian custody. In 2011, there was a major crackdown on the ULFA in Bangladesh, which greatly assisted the government of India in bringing ULFA leaders to talks. In January 2010, ULFA softened its stance and dropped demands for independence as a condition for talks with the government of India. On 3 September 2011, a tripartite agreement for suspension of operations against ULFA was signed between the Indian government, the Assam government and the ULFA leaders. Current leaders Paresh Barua, sentenced to death by Bangladesh court. Arabandar Rajkoa, released on bail. Pradeep Gogoa, released on bail. Anup Chesha, deported to India from Bangladesh, currently in Indian custody. Rayu Barua, released on bail. Mithing Adimari, released on bail. Chitraban Hasrika, released on bail. Pranati Dekha, released on bail. Sashadar Chowdhury, released on bail. History. The ULFA was founded on 7 April 1979 in Shivazagar, Assam by some youths which included Paresh Barua, Arabandar Rajkoa, Anup Chesha, Pradip Goga, Bhadreshwar Gohain and Budswar Goga. The organization's purpose was to engage in an armed struggle to form a socialist Assam. Recruiting for the front did not begin until 1983. Soon after it finished recruitment in 1984, it began to seek out training and arms procurement from other groups such as the Kachin Independence Army and the Nationalist Socialist Council of Nagaland. In 1986 it launched a fundraising campaign across India by way of extortion. It then began to set up camps in Tinsukia and Dibragar but was soon banned by New Delhi on 7 November under the Unlawful Activities Act. In less than a decade of its formation, the Ulfra emerged as one of the most powerful and violent insurgent outfit in Southeast Asia, largely because of the immense popularity it enjoyed during the first decade of its struggle as well as its economic power which in turn helped it in bolstering its military capabilities. In the early 1990s, ULFA launched an aggressive campaign with victims such as security forces, political opponents, and blasting rail links. In July 1991 the front captured and held 14 people for ransom, included in the abductees was an engineer and a national of the Soviet Union. From the 1990s on the ULFA have continued to carry out terrorist attacks. ULFA according to itself. The ULFA is a revolutionary political organization engaged in a liberation struggle against state terrorism and economic exploitation by India for the establishment of a sovereign, independent Assam. It does not consider itself a secessionist organization, as it claims that Assam was never a part of India and as a matter of fact the Treaty of Yandabu was signed in 1826 by General Sir Archibald Campbell, on the British side. 
and by Governor of Legaring Maha Min Hla Kure Htin from the Burmese side. According to the treaty, the Burmese agreed to cede to the British Assam, Manipur, Rakhina, and Tana the coast south of Salween River. Cease all interference in Kasha and Jainsha. Pay an indemnity of £1 million sterling in four installments. Allow for an exchange of diplomatic representatives between Ava and Calcutta, and sign a commercial treaty in due course. It claims that among the various problems that the people of Assam are confronting, the problem of national identity is the most basic, and therefore it seeks to represent independent-minded struggling peoples, irrespective of race, tribe, caste, religion and nationality. ULFA According to Government of India the Government of India has classified it as a terrorist organization and had banned it under the Unlawful Activities Act in 1990. Concurrently, Goy started military offensives against it, named Operation Badrang November 1990, Operation Rhino September 1991, Operation All Clear December 2003 and Operation Rhino 2 lead by the Indian Army. The anti-insurgency operation still continues at present under the unified command structure. The government of India accuses ULFA of maintaining links with the inter-services intelligence of Pakistan and the DGFI of Bangladesh, and waging a proxy war on their behalf against India. Links to China The outlawed group has been using China for shelter following mounting pressure from both Burma and Bangladesh, in turn pressured by India. The outfit's top commander, Paresh Barua, is living near the Sino-Burmese border looking for an alternative position for a hideout. There are 50 ULFA militants holed up in China's Yunnan province led by the group's LT. Partha Jyoti Goga. Major Activities Assassinations Some of the major assassinations by ULFA include that of Surendra Paul in May 1990, the brother of businessman Lord SWRAJ Paul, that precipitated a situation leading to the sacking of the government of Assam under Prafula Kumar Mahanta and the beginning of Operation Badrang. On the ULFA's Army Day on 16 March 2003, an IED explosion under a bus on National Highway No. 7 killed six civilians and wounded approximately 55 others. In 1991 a Russian engineer, a national of the Soviet Union, was kidnapped along with others and killed. In 1997, Sanjay Ghosh, a social activist and a relative of a high-ranking Indian diplomat, was kidnapped and killed. The highest government officer assassinated by the group was local AGP Minister Nagan Sharma in 2000. An unsuccessful assassination attempt was made on AGP Chief Minister Prafula Kumar Mahanta in 1997. A mass grave discovered at a destroyed ULFA camp in Lackey Partha Forest showed evidence of executions committed by ULFA. ULFA continues to attempt ambushes and sporadic attacks on government security forces. In 2003, the ULFA was accused of killing laborers from Bihar in response to an alleged molestation of a Mazur girl in a train passing through Bihar. This incident sparked off anti-Behari sentiment in Assam, and ULFA saw it as an opportunity to regain its lost ground. The ULFA killed civilians of Bihari origin who had been in Assam for generations, and had been assimilated in the greater Assamese society. In 2003, during a Railways Recruitment Board examination for group posts conducted by North Frontier Rail, a good number of candidates from Bihar and other states were beaten up and stopped from taking exam by some elements who were seeking 100%. Reservation for the Assamese non-employed long ahead of the date of the said test. In resentment, some hoodlums misbehaved randomly with train passengers from northeastern states passing through some of the stations like Katihar, Jamalpur, Kishanganj in Bihar. During that period ULFA was already losing its popularity and ground across many pockets in Assam where it had strongholds. 
However, ULFA took this situation as an opportunity to fan an opposition against India among people in Assam. They started killing innocent Hindi-speaking people just to show own presence in the state. On 15 August 2004, an explosion occurred in Demaji district of Assam in which 13 people died, mainly women and schoolchildren. This explosion was carried out by ULFA. The ULFA has obliquely accepted responsibility for the blast. This appears to be the first instance of ULFA admitting to public killings with an incendiary device. In January 2007, the ULFA once again struck in Assam killing approximately 62 Hindi-speaking migrant workers mostly from Bihar. ULFA notoriety as a directionless and unpopular organization increased, as the bomb blast victims also included several ethnic Assamese people. The central government made a tough response forcing a dreaded group of ULFA-28 battalion to unilaterally bow down and seek asylum from the government. This particular one-sided ceasefire broke the backbone of ULFA. On 15 March 2007, ULFA triggered a blast in Guwahati, injuring six persons as it celebrated its Army Day. Economic subversion The ULFA has claimed responsibility for bombings of economic targets like crude oil pipelines freight trains and government buildings, including the 7th of August 2005 attack on oil pipelines in Assam. ULFA carried out a bombing and destruction of a 5 million litre petrol reservoir at Digboy Refinery in Tinsukia, with an estimated property loss of Rs 200 million. On the same day they also damaged the gas pipeline in the oil district of Tinsukia. Recruitment in the initial years of the Ulfa movement Cadres were recruited from rural areas as well as from many towns in Upper and Middle Assam districts. One of the most popular Ulfa leader of all time, the late Hirik Jyoti Mahanta hailed from a place which is just a few kilometers from the state capital Guwahati. However, with the Assamese urban middle class becoming increasingly skeptical of Ulfa's method of functioning, the Ulfa targeted the remote villages and the tribal areas for recruitment. According to intelligence sources, the Paresh Barua faction of the Ulfa, which have been continuously raising its voice against the ongoing peace process being initiated by the Arab and Daraj Koar faction, is engaged in a massive recruitment drive in the rural areas of Dibragar, Tinsukia, Shivazagar, Lakhimpur and Nalbara districts of Assam. The Ulfa also has strong following among the Naga people in the tribal areas of Assam. Political activities after 1985 and before it was banned in 1990, ULFA was credited in the media with many public activities. It has continued a public discourse of sorts through the local media, occasionally publishing its position on political issues centered around the nationality question. It has participated in public debates with public figures from Assam. During the last two local elections, the ULFA had called for boycotts. Media reports suggest that it used its forces to intimidate activists and supporters of the then-ruling parties. Extortion The ULFA is credited with some bank robberies during its initial stages. Now it is widely reported to extort businessmen, bureaucrats and politicians for collecting funds. In 1997, the chief minister of Assam accused Tartati of paying the medical bills of the ULFA cultural secretary Pranati Dekha at Mumbai Hospital. Organized criminal activities The ULFA is not involved in any other organized criminal activities such as drug trafficking and arms trafficking. Other activities The ULFA is reported to maintain a number of camps in Bangladesh where members are trained and sheltered away from Indian security forces. In April 2004, police and Coast Guard intercepted unloading at Chittagong of a massive amount of illegal arms and ammunition, being loaded into 10 trucks and believed intended for ULFA. A total of 50 have been charged with arms smuggling and arms offences, including former high-level Bangladesh political appointees.
including Bangladesh National Party ministers and national security intelligence military officers, as well as prominent businessmen, and Paresh Barua, military wing chief of ULFA, then living in Dhaka. He fled the country. Trials were still underway in Chittagong in 2012 under tight security. Until recently, they had maintained camps in Bhutan, which were destroyed by the Royal Bhutan Army aided by the Special Frontier Force in December 2003. These camps housed combatants and non-combatant families of ULFA members. The ULFA maintains close relationships with other separatist organizations like NDFB, KLO and NSCN. Surrenders Beginning in 1990, the government of India has attempted to wean away members of the ULFA. This occurred due to the death of the ULFA's Deputy Commander-in-Chief Hirak Jyoti Mahanta on 31 December 1991. He had opposed surrenders, but they began after his death. In 1992 a large section of second-rung leaders and members surrendered to government authorities. These former members were allowed to retain their weapons to defend against their former colleagues. They were offered bank loans without any liabilities to help them reintegrate into society. This loose group, now called SULFA, has become an important element in the armed politics and business of Assam. Some surrenders have been staged for political and economic reasons by local and national governments. The total number of ULFA cadres to have laid down arms has gone up to 8,718. 4,993 cadres surrendered between 1991 and 1998. 3,435 surrendered between 1998 and 2005, when a new policy to deal with the ULFA was unveiled. On 24 January 2012, one of Northeast India's biggest surrender ceremonies took place in Assam's main city of Guwahati, when a total of 676 militants laid down their weapons. The Home Minister gave them roses. Secret Killings of ULFA Family Members During the government of AGP leader Prafula Kumar Mahanta, unidentified gunmen assassinated a number of family members of ULFA leaders. With the fall of this government following elections in 2001, the secret killings stopped. Dinesh Barua, the elder brother of Paresh Barua, military wing chief of ULFA in the 2000s, was taken from his house at night by unidentified Assamese men, along with armed military officers. Later his body was found lying near a cremation center in Chabua. ULFA's publicity secretary, Mithing Adimari, lost five members of his family during this period. Government investigations into the killings culminated in the report of the Tsaikia Commission, presented to the Assam Assembly 15 November 2007. The report describes how the killings were organized by Prafula Mahanta, then the Assam Home Minister. They were executed by the police, with cooperation from the Indian Army. The gunmen were former members of ULFA who had surrendered to the government. They approached the targets at home, at night, knocking on the door and speaking in Assamese to allay suspicion. When the victims answered the door, they were shot or kidnapped to be shot elsewhere. Negotiations, Talks The ULFA has put forward a set of three preconditions for talks and negotiations with the Indian government. The government has rejected these preconditions. The preconditions are, the talks should be held in a third country. The talks should be held under United Nations supervision. The agenda of the talks should include the sovereignty of Assam. In 2004, the ULFA dropped the first two preconditions and offered to talk with the government. The government of India was not ready to negotiate on the issue of sovereignty. 
Still some progress was made when the ULFA formed a People's Consultative Group in September 2005 to prepare the grounds for an eventual negotiation between the government and ULFA, which the government has welcomed. In a sustained operation launched by Indian Army inside a national park in Debrusse Coar, ULFA lost its hides and camps, important leaders and cadres. The group came to the negotiating table in 2005. According to the India Times, talks were first held in December 2005 at the residence of the Prime Minister, Manmohan Singh. There were three rounds of peace talks with the 11-member People's Consultative Group, headed by noted Assamese writer Indira Goswami, leading to a temporary truce in August 2006. However, the truce broke down by the 23rd of September of the same year as ULFA continued with its violent activities against civil population mainly tea, estates and oil pipelines. It also violated ceasefire as it lobbed grenades on army columns during the ceasefire period. Ceasefire by a portion of 28 battalion of ULFA Some leaders and cadres of the A and C companies of ULFA declared unilateral ceasefire on 24 June 2008 at a press meet held at Amarpa in Tinsukia district. The declared the ceasefire to pressurize the top brass of ULFA to sit on negotiation table with the government of India. But the top brass of ULFA expelled the leaders of 28 battalion led by Marinal Hazarika and Jaten Dutta, the group later renamed as ULFA. Currently the 28th battalion is under commandership of LT Bijoy Chinese alias Bijoy Das. All the battalions have now been disbanded and only part of 27 battalion renamed as Kapilagut remains. There are no commanders other than Paresh Barua. All the others have been downgraded to staff and workers. Renewed peace initiative, with the arrest and deportation of top Holfa leaders by the Bangladesh government to India. The once stalled peace process received a boost when the jailed Holfa leaders took the initiative in forming a citizen forum comprising intellectuals, writers, journalists sympathizers and professionals from various other fields that would act as a catalyst in bringing the government of India and the rebel Ulfa to the negotiating table. In a state-level convention held in Guwahati on 24 April 2010, the forum passed a set of resolutions to expedite the peace process between government and the ULFA. These resolutions include sending an 11-member team to Delhi to put pressure on the centre to hold talk with ULFA at an earlier date. The convention resolved to urge both government and ULFA to come forward for talk without any condition. Moreover, the convention in a resolution demanded immediate release of ULFA leaders for from jail. According to the Indian Army sources, the total strength of ULFA is around 3,000 while various other sources put the figure ranging from 4,000 to 6,000. A military wing of the ULFA, the Sanjukta Muktifuge was formed on 16 March 1996. SMF has three full-fledged battalions, the 7th, 8th and the 709th. The remaining battalions exist only on paper at best they have strengths of a company or so. Their allocated spheres of operation are as follows. 7th BN is responsible for defense at general headquarters. 8th BN, Nagaon, Moragaon, Kabi Anglong, 9th BN, Golagat, Jorhat, Shiva Zagar, 11th BN, Kamrup, Nalbara, 27th BN, Barpata, Bongaigaon, Kokrajar, 28th BN, Tinsukia, Dibragar, 709th BN, Kalik, Hala, in the past decade nearly 2,500 militants including about 200 women cadres have surrendered to the government. 